It's a tough crowd before we even get started. Thank you all for coming tonight. We um, appreciate your engagement, your interest. Thank you for submitting questions for those of you that did that beforehand. We'll cover some of those tonight. We'll have opportunity to ask questions from the floor as well. Um, so first, just to give a little background and context, and um, if you haven't been following along the story or using Facebook as the truth sayer of life on what's been happening, but real quick, just some ground rules. You can't read much of this, but just thought it'd be nice to start off with a little bit of ground rules from the father of our country, George Washington. Um, treat everyone with respect. Surround yourself with positivity. Always smile unless it's serious. Speak kindly about others. Always try to do what is right. Engage in class conversation. Always give your best. Keep an open mind. Think before you do. And don't be a party pooper, which is loosely translated from George Washington time as speak not of doleful things in a time of mirth. Don't be a party pooper. I love it. Real quick, just some context over the last couple of months that council's been dealing with. Council's here, or some of our city staff is here. Mike Schuler here, who we'll introduce here in a moment. So again, thank you all for coming. Um, so what we're going to do, I'll give a little bit of context. We're going to ask Mike to run through some slides on what his plans are for our marina. Uh, then we've had a um, handful of submitted questions online, and we'll run through some of those. Also alternate with in, hear meeting, hear questions, so we can kind of get a mix of both on whatever's on your mind or what you may hear from Mike tonight that may prompt another question or two. But just real quick, if... Um, if your question's already been answered just in the interest of time and making sure we can get to everybody, um, Mike's going to answer quite a number, I hope, when he runs through his presentation. But if your question's already been answered, um, you know, either if you need clarity, that's great. If you need something different, that's great. But if we can just keep it moving, that would be even better. So real quick, at our council meeting on April 26, we announced we had received a letter requesting approval of the assignment of the existing leases held by the Marina Joint Ventures and Marina Outpost LLC with the City of Isle of Palms to Morgan Creek Marina LLC. This is the same ownership group that owns Bohicket, the Old Village Yacht Club, and Seabreeze Marinas, among others, whose parent company is Coastal Marina Holdings. In accordance with the leases, any assignment requires the city's prior consent. Since that council meeting in April, the potential new marina operator has been meeting with council members directly, restaurant owners, other parties and residents to get as much input as possible as to a go forward situation or solution. We've also received due diligence information, ownership structure, financial information, and a letter of intent from the proposed operator for city's review. There have been a couple of presentations that Mike's done at city council meetings, mayor's messages recapping the process and drafts of the amendment shared via the city's website. Council approved the first reading of the ordinances. You may know that we have to have two readings and two votes on an ordinance at our June meeting was the first one. We scheduled this meeting tonight to allow residents the opportunity to ask questions needing clarity, needing clarity of council staff and the potential new marine operator. If the lease is transferred, the new potential tenant has expressed a committed interest in entering a new lease negotiation with the city, at which time the city and residents can work collaboratively with a new marina operator to explore mutually beneficial long-term changes to the marina. The marina operations and store continue to be controlled by the existing contractual arrangements with the current or new leaseholder until 2045. What that means is the city cannot rewrite or change what is already in place unless the city and the leaseholder mutually agree to a change. Unilaterally writing a new lease or demanding material changes is simply not possible. Accordingly, we cannot demand that any changes to the lease be made to grant the transfer. Mike will cover some of this in his presentation, but the good news is Mike's agreed to, and as part of this negotiation, to um, turn back over the shared parking lot, which is a middle parking lot on the waterway side of the boat ramp. This would be a huge win for the residents because the city would control that lot, make it available for free for residents, and better enforce the current regulations. Some of the other changes in the amendments are minor, just clarifying language from a poorly written drafted document. Also, Mike has asked that the existing lease language on alcohol consumption be clarified and for on-premise on alcohol consumption to be allowed. 
The lease as written states that the marina can sell beer and wine. The current lease does not expressly allow the consumption as required by city code. And it is silent as to whether the sale of beer and wine are package only or whether the marina can sell single servings. The current tenant does not have an on-premise consumption license from the state. As a practical matter, incidental on-site consumption has always happened on the back deck, and the new tenant simply wants to continue on-site consumption and be in compliance with the law. Current marina store lease allows the sale of beer and wine in the marina market store. It also currently allows indoor seating for 12 people for eating. The potential new tenant is asking for express approval of on-site consumption of beer and wine in the lease premises in the outdoor deck until sunset. No bartenders, no bar tabs, sale of liquor would not be authorized. Any other material changes to the building, kitchen, service area, or deck would require city or council approval. Again, the current lease and its restrictions guidelines stay in place. So I think we'll let Mike uh, go ahead and run through his presentation to show us uh, kind of his plans. Mike is the managing partner of the proposed ownership group. We've asked him to come today and discuss his plans for our marina and the next steps. Mike is founder, managing partner, and CEO, and has been leading Coastal Marina Holding since its inception. Mike is a Charleston native and an alumnus of Wando and Clemson, which may give some strikes against you right off the bat, just like that. <laughs> so Mike, come share, and then we'll get to the Q&A. Right. Right. right, again, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and and members of council for all your time. Thanks to the city staff for spending a lot of time with me lately. Um, it's greatly appreciated. And, and moreover, thanks to everybody for coming tonight. I think, A, this is a great venue for the community to kind of hear, uh, hear important details from the horse's mouth, obviously to ask questions. And um, I'm really looking forward to interacting with you guys and collaborating not only now, but moving forward. So. With no further ado, uh, here we go. Okay, so just a little bit, bit of background for those of you who may or may not know. Um, our parent company is called Coastal Marinas. Coastal Marinas uh, owns and operates Seabreeze Marina in downtown Charleston the old Village Yacht Club, which is formerly Simmons Marina on Shem Creek in Mount Pleasant, uh, Bohicket Marina at Kiwa Seabrook, St. John's Marina at the Stono River between James and John's Island, and more recently, as of about two weeks ago, we've acquired the Ripley Light Yacht Club Marina um, in West Ashland. So we're very, very fortunate to have put together a, a, a nice local portfolio and um, we're very busy managing it and we're hoping to add the Isle of Palms Marina to, to this dynamic mix. So again, just a little bit about me. I think the mayor covered the high points. Um, again, my name is Mike Schuler. I am local to Charleston. I grew up in Mount Pleasant. I went to Wando. I went to Clemson. Um, I'm a lifetime boater. I've spent every other weekend of my, you know, of my childhood here on the Isle of Palms, playing soccer on these fields right here, hanging out at the marina. I even worked at the marina for a period of time, many, many years ago, back in the 90s. So I know it well. Uh, it's a special place to me, just as I know that it's clearly a special place to, to everybody in here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spending your Monday night here with me. So um, outside of the marina business, I've, I've I own and operate a, a real estate investment business downtown, um, as well as a hospitality business based downtown. We've got um, we've got an incredible team and and several hundred employees across several different industries here locally. So um, the marina business is something we've been really fortunate to be able to um, add to our core competencies, and we've been able to take a lot of experience that we've had whether it be in real estate investment, property management, hospitality management, all these different skill sets uh, are, are crucial to being able to operate something as dynamic as a marina. See, these marinas are not just static. It's not a, it's not a mini storage where you set it and forget it. Um, there, there's so many things that are involved in anything that floats in salt water and the staffing issues in the hurricanes and 
and just everything that goes along with it. We, we feel like we bring a lot of those critical skills to the table. So again, more than just to Marina, this is not necessarily describing the Isle of Palms. This is sort of the way we look at our entire portfolio. Um, we have experience in operating amenities. We have experience in operating activities. Um, we've, we've created kind of a new level of service that we feel is the way that the industry should be operated in terms of concierge offerings. What do I mean by that? I mean that, you know, boating is a privilege, but sometimes it's a hassle. We try to take the hassle out of that for our tenants and for our customers. Um, we've implemented a lot of technology that makes that possible. So um, in addition, um, I feel like all of our marine assets are very family and pet friendly, which is, I know is important to this community. Um, again, this is something we've reviewed in council previously, but I'm gonna hit it again really quickly. Um, it's a very, very basic overview of our business plan. Um, and bear in mind, the lease does not allow for a tremendous amount of change. So our baseline plan is not to go make wholesale changes. Our baseline plan is to do the best we can with what we've got. Um, so first and foremost, don't change what's already working. Um, a lot of the water operations, a lot of the operators were wondering, oh man, are we gonna, are we gonna get put out? On the side of the road, the answer is absolutely not. We value the charter guys. I'm friends with several of them personally, um, as well as the tour operators. And we think that they are a, a very important part of Isle Palms. They've been there for years. So uh, we certainly intend to keep them. Same thing with Saltworks. Um, you know, again, I, I enjoy their product and, and I think a lot of people do too. I've got uh, what I feel like is an opportunity for a great relationship with Mark and we're looking forward to continuing that relationship. Uh, same thing with the staff. We, we actually had a really good day this past week getting to meet a lot of the staff for the first time in a, sort of a private session uh, individually. And um, I think several of them again had concerns, you know, what is, what's gonna become of my job and, and, and et cetera. And, and I'd like to think that, um, that they all came away with a very good feeling about what we could do for them when we're able to take over operations. Um, I thought it was a great, a great day meeting the staff. Um, number one comment, and this is whether, you know, surveying uh, members of council, city staff, anybody that I've known for, for, for in my life on Isle of Palms, you know, says, what, what do you want to see out of the marina? I think he's a very, sort of shocking statistic that this island has this amazing asset that very few local people actually have access to. And, and I just, again, thought it was a very strange question when they said, would you be willing to give us better access? And then my, my answer is, of course. I mean, I think that's a great idea. Um, we need to give everybody better access. So that's become a tenant of you know our mindset moving forward um sort of the the theme to what we we're doing obviously we're going to operate the marina in place as it is and over time how do we layer on different ways to give residents better access um so we're excited about that again specifically what does that mean we're going to get into even more detail moving forward but Resident priority access to slips. To me, that's an easy thing to say. Absolutely, that, that's an easy one. I've got no reason to lease a slip to somebody from Somerville if I could lease it to somebody from right in this room. So um, improve and expand boat storage. Again, that's another thing that I've heard from countless people. I've been on a waiting list. There's A of all, there's no transparency, but B, there, there's really no end in sight. Everybody knows there's hundreds of people who might want to be there. Um, how, do I, how do I improve that situation? These are things that we think about. Again, we talked about concierge services, um, optimized parking and marina operations. That's going to be a challenge. That's something that very operationally, we're going to have to 
get in there and learn it and figure it out and work together with the city and our neighbors to help make things work better. Uh, we do have a boat club concept, something that I'm very proud of, I'm very excited about. I know there's a lot of questions about it and we're gonna get to that a little bit later. Um, upgrade the retail offering and operations over time. Again, when I say upgrade the retail offering, I don't mean we're gonna tear everything out. There's a lot of restrictions that prevent me from doing that. I walk in there and, and on one hand, I, I feel nostalgic. On the other hand, I think that we can do better. And I think that anybody um, with an open mind could walk in and see why um, we might think that, that there's some improvements to be made. Um, that said, there's a lot of things in there that are really important to the marina. Anything local, that is something that we cling to. If you look at any of our other businesses, local merchandising, local brands, those are what we want to support. So that's what you would see more of if we were the operators of the marina. Now, I know we gave some examples, and I know there's been some specific commentary about these. These are just examples. We're not saying we're going to put an ice cream bar and a seafood station into this place. We got the as built about a week ago, so I couldn't tell you exactly what we're going to do. But these are examples of things that could be interesting in the marina. We need to get in there, get our feet wet, and learn it for ourselves um, before we can really make those determinations. So, and our vision is simple. Maintain the island community character of the Isle of Palms while investing time and resources to make responsible improvements to the marina and its operations over the course of time, that 23 years, resulting in a successful and sustainable marina that the entire community can be proud of. I don't know that the entire community could say they're proud of the marina right now. And I've got a steep hill ahead of me, but I think that's going to be my goal. I want everybody here to be proud of this asset. So residents deserve more. Let's talk about making residents a priority. You know, this is kind of a quasi public amenity. But again, unfortunately, there's only a handful in the grand scheme of things of actual residents who keep their boats there. Now, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the other aspects of the marina, whether it be the convenience store aspect or, um, you know, the, the commercial operators. But, um, but I think that's, that's something that truly needs to be focused on. And again, that's the number one thing we've heard from every single person we've talked to, um, which since April has been quite a few people. Um, we've heard from a lot of people who are excited about a new um, professional operation and particularly a local operation because I think they feel like they can they can put some faith in somebody local to do what they would want to see done. It's almost impossible to find consensus in a community like this. But at the end of the day, when you have somebody leading an operation like this, you want to have confidence that at the end of the at the end of the day, whether you fully agree or not, that they're doing things with the with the right intentions in mind. So I think people are excited about that. Again, our operations are going to focus on prioritizing resident access to wet and dry storage. Have transparent and accountable wait lists. I feel like people act when they ask the question as if that's a major imposition. I don't think that's an imposition at all. Um, we're excited to offer that. Prioritize resident launches. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but again, you know, we've, we've we've offered free resident launches, on top of other ways to prioritize launches. We'll we'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, resident parking as well. Prioritize resident parking. So maintaining quality of life. We're listening. We understand, and we agree. We have no disagreement about whether quality of life issues are important to our neighbors. Um, we're aware that there's concern um, about potential for noise creation. Um, and I want you to hear it from my mouth. We don't anticipate any changes that will, that, that are likely to create noise issues. Furthermore, you've got my commitment here today. If any changes are made over the course of the next 23 years, that negatively impact our neighbors, 
we need to hear about it and and, and we're not going to be supportive of it if it's going to negatively impact our neighbors i want that to be very clear we've got a great business and as much as i love talking to this group today i i do not want to create a situation where i've 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 stepped on my neighbor's toes because I don't want to come into this room and find us on opposing sides. Um, we are more than happy to discuss any concerns, whether it be tonight or, or in the coming days, about any concerns, put those fears to ease. Um, similarly, we've heard concern for possibility of congestion. I think everybody can hear, here can agree that, that the area can be, at times, already highly prone to congestion. For us, we do not see that as a positive thing for our business operation. One of the hallmarks of our business is efficiency. Uh, a, a congested atmosphere is, is just not good for anybody. So we've committed a lot of resources to making that better. That's not something that we're gonna be able to solve. It's not been solved. Um, by the Finches, it's not been solved by anybody since them. Um, but if anybody can help it, I think it's us. We've got resources committed. We've got in-house engineering. We're ready to work with Douglas. We're ready to work with our neighbors. And I think we can make a positive impact over time. We've got to get in there, get our feet wet, and learn, learn that business on the ground. Um, let's see. Maintain the local character of the marina. This is also something we've heard as a concern. Um, I understand a new operator coming in. It could be a very um, commercially operate, oriented operator, you know, with grand ideas and, and big plans. I'd like to think most of our plans are really rooted in operations. And how do we make this place function better? I do not believe that anybody here is going to see anything Coming, coming from us, that they're going to say, wow, that's that's totally out of character with our vision of the Isle of Palms. Um, and we would welcome any communication and collaboration along the way. So we also believe that modest improvements can and should be made along the way, as long as they're positive and responsible. Um, it's about making a better marina experience for everybody. We don't want to take the soul out of the Isle of Palms marina. Um, you know, an example of that is, is all these marinas in our portfolio. We're not taking the soul out of any of these other marinas. You go to downtown to the city marina and some people say, well, the soul got sucked out of that place. Well, we're not doing that at any of our marinas. I, I think you could talk to any employee that we've ever had and they would say that we're the best thing that ever happened to each of those assets. Um, the marina itself. Let's talk about the marina. The look, the feel, the functions of the marina will remain largely the same. Charter and commercial operators to remain. Um, we've got a lot of efficiencies that can be maintained, that can be achieved with the current operation of the transient business. Um, same thing with the public launching. A lot of efficiencies can be found in the public launching. Um, boat rentals, we've, we've, we heard a question about boat rentals. No, we're not going to take away the boat rentals. Um, we're required to have boat rentals as part of the lease. Um, we feel that having less boats in the boat rental fleet of better quality is probably uh, a better fit for us. Um, we feel strongly, and I think you will probably feel the same way after today, that the boat club offering that we have is, in, you know, is not a replacement for uh, the boat rental fleet uh, one for one, but in terms of boats in the water, I think you're gonna find that the Isle of Palms access to the water is gonna be exponentially improved uh, with the boat club over the boat rentals. So. Happy to discuss boat rentals if anybody in the room uh, has further questions. Um, we hope to work with the restaurant to improve access by water. Um, I know they're just, just now getting open. 
but I bet by next season, um, there's going to be a real need for collaboration between the marina and the restaurant oper operators to really service um, business from the water. Um, we're ready, willing, and able to do that. Um, marina ship store again, the same theme. The look, feel, and function of the marina ship store will remain largely the same. The salt works to remain in place. Um, we want to layer in our our merchandising program over time, but that doesn't mean we're going to do it at the expense of, of certain things that have been uh, hallmarks of, of the Isle of Palms Marina. Again, so I don't believe anybody's going to come in and, and see a wholesale change. Uh, this is something that will happen over time. Um, do we have ideas to layer in potential new options in that marina? Absolutely. Um, We've heard, heard a comment that there's another seafood purveyor on the Isle of Palms and that they have seafood at the Harris Teeter and you don't need seafood. And I just want to be very clear, this is just an example. We only suggested this because we've got a marina on Shem Creek and we've got incredible relationships with the shrimpers. And to be honest, we get great shrimp. Um, but that's, this, is, this is simply an example. We have to... We have to get in there and get our feet wet first. Um, and again, you've already got a family fam family friendly atmosphere there. I think it can be improved. It's definitely something we value. Beer and wine licensing. I know the mayor hit on this and I think that um, it's incumbent upon me to just speak directly to it. Uh, I recognize that some people are concerned about licensing for on-premise consumption. And I wanna set the record straight. Our goal is not to, not to trick the city and, and, and implement a bar or a nightclub. Our goal is to simply recognize what has happened there for many, many years, and it's kind of an ongoing condition. Um, I, I, I think this is, A of all, it's important from a legal aspect. B of all, we think it's probably just the right way to operate the business. Um, so again, we're not opening a bar. We're not looking to encourage or foster a bar-like atmosphere. I can't stress that enough. Um, we volunteered a lot of uh, lease constraints that would prevent us from ever getting too far down that road if we were uh, if we were wanting to do so. So there's a lot of stop gaps in there. Um, I think it's also important to know that all of our other marinas have the exact same licensure that we're applying for here. And this, this was contemplated you know, well before this acquisition was ever even a discussion. Um, you know, they all operate very differently. Um, and I don't know that any single one of them could, would, or should be compared directly to Isle of Palms because the whole idea behind our approach to business is that we're, we're looking to tailor the services to the community um, and, and we're here in the community loud and clear um, so I don't think anybody should expect anything um, anything outside of what they see now down at the marina so um, I don't believe just to kind of really put put this to bed for for good I don't believe anybody could describe any single one of our marina assets as anything other than family friendly. Marinas are by nature sort of a family friendly, pet friendly environment. These are things that we value and uh, these are the only things we would support. So moving on, dry storage, um, lots to unpack here too. Current conditions, um, just curious, anybody in the room have a boat in dry storage? I, I didn't think so. Um, listen, it's a lease requirement. We we need to work on that. Um, I I think that's an obvious uh, area of focus. Um, the wait list, hundreds. Nobody really knows because I, I don't know that anybody is aware of a wait list that, that they can put their hands on. 
uh, myself included. So, um, you know, right now you've got a smattering of boats that are parked in a parking lot. Um, generally, the marina staff will move them around with the tractor to to maneuver them just right. And, you know, apparently occasionally a marina staff member will launch the boat for a tip, but otherwise um, it's sort of a self-launch program. I look at this and I say, there's a better way to do this. There's a much better way to do this. Um, and I'd like to think that if one of our priorities is, as an operator and as a community is improving re resident access, well, this is an area that deserves a lot of study. I also want to be abundantly clear. We are not building a dry stack. Our go forward plan is to operate as the marina is currently operating and hopefully do a better job. There are certain other things that we are studying that we think could dramatically improve how the dry storage is operated. Um, these are creative ways to solve the problem. And I like to think that as a community, you would hope that an operator would try to solve this problem creatively. We may not be able to solve the problem creatively without stepping on our neighbor's toes. That's, that's, that's where we draw the line. If, if we come up with a solution that our neighbors aren't in lockstep with us, then we're not gonna adopt that solution. And again, I wanna make that abundantly clear. Um, so we're studying options currently, several options uh, for improving the dry storage process. Some of these options include ground stands, called work racks, call them a lot of different things in the industry. This is very standard to marinas. A lot of different marinas move them around differently. Um, and we're studying different ways to do that. Um, I'll give you an example. If we find that we can more efficiently um, establish dry storage by using ground stands and electric lifts that do not have beep beeps and tall booms and nobody's getting dropped in the water like a dry stack and we're utilizing trailers just like normal to, to essentially launch these boats in a concierge manner for these owners, I'd like to think we could all get behind that because at the end of the day, the people that will benefit are your island resident neighbors. Um, and anybody who's concerned about that, I would be more than happy to talk with them because those are the very same people who I'm gonna be looking to for extensively for permission at the end of the day. I wanna make sure everybody's comfortable if that is a direction and we choose to, to move in. Um, and again, the go forward assumption is that we will be operating as the marina is currently operating. So let's talk about boat club. There's a lot of boat clubs out there. Um, we were fortunate a couple years ago to have the ability to start our own club. So what we did, I got a group of my staff employees together and I said, listen, I think, I think there's an opportunity here. The markets are moving. You can see in a macro fashion, uh, boat clubs are becoming more popular across the globe. It's not just Charleston. And I said, we need to get ahead of this. Only problem is I don't really care for the products that are in the market right now. I think they're, they're not for me. So I said, I want to create a product. It could be for me. I'm a boater. So my staff, did an amazing job. They put together focus groups. We asked a million questions and we learned a lot and we built our own technology. We built our own platform and it's been incredibly successful. Um, and we're fortunate for that. And I give them all the credit. They're a lot smarter than me. So um, again, our boat club, premium boats, no upfront fees. We do offer the concierge services. Um, we're working on offering captain experiences and this sort of thing by spring of 2023. Um, again, if you think about it, you can get on your, your app car after the trip. It's on the boat when you get there and you leave it on the boat. You don't clean anything. 
it truly is a seamless experience and something that I think the Isle of Palms um, could really get behind. And I say that not because I, I, I just think that, I say that because I've had a tremendous amount of people reach out to me over the last several weeks, um, you know, through, through our own, you know, other websites saying, hey, I live on Isle of Palms. I'm excited about this. How do I get on the list? Um, you know, I've had people approach me today. How do I get on the list? This is not for everybody, but I think you'd be surprised how many Isle of Palms families would really, really benefit. And this is not just a, a young family. This could be a, a family to retiree, anything in between. Um, it really is great. In terms of is the boat club going to take over the marina? Um, the first answer is no. Um, we're anticipating between five and 10 boats in the 2023 season. That's if we can get boats. It's pretty tough out there right now. Um, but again, that said, I was asked to put a cap on it. And um, we came up with a number. I think that number right now is 33, is it? 33%? Listen, I would be shocked if we hit 33% of linear footage um, anytime soon. This is, it's a, it's a limit that I think is important to make sure that there's balance, you know, over the next 23 years. But that said, um, I, I'd, I'd really, I, I don't want to limit ourselves to five or 10 boats. And then all of a sudden the families that get on the list first win, everybody else loses. I think we need to, we need to kind of see what the market gives us and react. Uh, that's, that's our go forward plan. Um, Again, benefits, your monthly costs. Again, no, no upfront fees, but your monthly costs is less than it would cost you to store your boat at the marina. So if you think about that, less than it would cost you to store your boat at the marina. No insurance, no taxes, no maintenance, no dead batteries, just fine. So um, even a small club can serve as hundreds of Isle of Palms families. I think that's really impressive. Um, Coming from a boater, lifetime boater, all shapes and sizes, I can tell you that the, the convenience is undeniable. So we are looking forward to launching our boat club here at Isle Palms. Things we've heard, we've heard, will the boat club generate more noise? The answer is no. Boat clubs are normal boats, just like any other boat at the marina. There's no writing on them, there's no advertisements on them. We did that on purpose because that's something we found in our focus group people didn't care for, um, and I agree with them. So if this boat is passing your house or passing you out on the water, you wouldn't have a clue that it was anything other than another boat or on the water. Um, a lot of these people on these boats are gonna be your neighbors. Uh, are boat club members safe? I would say, yes, our clubs have a flawless safety record and thousands and thousands and thousands of launches collectively, flawless safety record. Interesting stats, approximately 70% of our members have previous boating experience. And even more surprisingly, although the more I know about uh, this business, less surprisingly, just about 25% of our Members have other boats as well. Different size boats, different type of boats. If you're a flats fisherman and your family really wants that sort of family-centered console experience, this is a way to get the best of both worlds. Um, so we're excited about that. Again, unlike rentals, it's not like a, a local could not rent a boat. But if, if you talk to anybody that's running the rental department, there are very few local customers at the rental department. Um, so unlike most of the rentals, our members are locals. They're not tourists. They're repeat boaters, and they treat the boats uh, with respect, and they follow the rules generally. Um, members, again, are in all, all types of members, families, all the way to retirees. Um, people say, well, what about beginner boaters? Well, beginner boaters are all beginners when they start. And after a couple trips, 
I think everybody would be surprised how quickly people are able to catch on when they don't have to worry about the trailer and the truck and everything that goes along um, with the boating experience. They're more likely to get back out there on the water. And before you know it, they are experienced boaters. So that's something everybody can take some comfort in. Um, in terms of resident access, this is this is a theme, this is a hallmark, again, of everything that, that we are trying to do here. We are more than committed to making sure that we open up, that we, we open wide the, the boat club access to the residents. I wouldn't have thought to do it any other way. So we're, we're excited to do that. Parking we've talked about, again, there are a lot of concerns with the parking. The current parking scheme is, is, is fraught with efficiencies. Um, something we've noticed, and I imagine that um, other people have noticed, non-residents are dominating the parking, and particularly the truck and the trailer parking. I don't know that I have a solution today, but I know that that's something that our team would be heavily focused on. Um, we need to see the parking patterns over the course of time, over the course of probably several different seasons to really understand what a solution might look like. Um, now we're extremely excited that the new restaurant is open and, and doing incredibly well. But again, the parking dynamic has changed. Uh, it's changed from you know the day before the restaurant was open. It's changed from where the restaurant is uh, in terms of demand now, um, it's a much different place than than uh, Morgan Creek Grill. It's a much different place than Trade Winds. And my sister worked at Trade Winds many years ago, so I'm familiar. Um, you know, and and I think all of that is really good. I think what it means, though, is I think that it's going to take a lot of collaboration, us, the restaurant, and the city. Um, so. Everybody knows that we're, we're, we're handing over control of the shared lot. I'd like to think that's going to solve a lot of problems very quickly um, that I know have been plaguing the city for a while. Um, you know, future plans, what, what, what might that look like? Again, we don't have plans today. Um, what might that look like? I think that pedestrians need to be heavily considered. I don't see that there's a, a really easy way to walk around that parking lot without maybe being in the way of a truck and a trailer. Um, low speed vehicles, I know are kind of a big new thing around here. Something that we have to learn and study. Um, bicycle parking um, and figuring out how to favor residents over off island traffic. So we got, we got our work cut out for us in the parking department. Um, just something to consider. Again, I've said it, but I, I want to keep driving home. Major changes will still require collaboration with the city. There, there's a lot of things that, that we can't just do unilaterally. And um, I know there's a lot of innuendo floating around the community about our plans and what they might be. I can assure you that our plans are very, very limited to the box that we're, that we're given. Um, but we are very excited, and I think we've got a great product. I think the island um, will benefit from some fresh blood in the operators uh, in the operators' chair. So, it's, and it's my honor to serve you guys. I am uh, welcome to your questions, Desiree. I don't know if you might have some to begin with. Oh, stay right there. So we'll start with a couple of the uh, submitted questions first, and then we'll get to some in. in uh, in-person questions. So first one was Deborah Elliott. Please address how the marina will help local kayakers access and safely paddle on the marina waters and along the intercoastal waterways. Currently, the IOP dock does not have a kayak launch pad. So first, Deborah, you want to talk a little bit about what the city's plan is for the public dock, um, where we are, and then Mike, if you want to take one of that. For those who don't know me, I'm Desiree Fragoso. I'm the city administrator. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to see so many faces. Um, certainly a very interesting topic, and I'm glad y'all could make it. 
Um, as you all know, the city took possession of the public dock that was um, previously encumbered by a water sports operation. We're in the process of developing design plans for a new and improved public dock, which will include a dedicated kayak launch. Um, it'll be fully ADA compliant. Um, and also we're conceptualizing a wider pier that would accommodate some swings and benches so that we can get as many people on the water um, from what we have today. Those plans are being um, developed today. They have to go through permitting and we're anticipating to be ready for uh, to start that construction later next year. So keep um, uh, any questions about that, I'll be here. Um, but we're something that we're very excited to provide to the city um, very, very soon. Thank you, Desiree. Next one's from Michelle French. You're not planning on adding a dry stack boat storage, are you? No. Also, this will not be affecting the green space IOP public dock that was approved, correct? And that is correct. B Love asks, can you assure us you will not add dry stack storage? I think we've gotten that one. Um, Forty Twifford, please tell the people who use the marina the most, Isle of Palm boaters, how you will make our marina experience the best it can be. I don't know if you have anything you want to add from sure. 40s here. If, um, sure. So, I mean, again, how, how do we make the Isle of Palms experience better? I think it all boils down to that number one question that, or excuse me, number one comment we've heard from everybody is better access for residents. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things we can work on like parking and this and that. But at the end of the day, if we put that in the forefront of our minds as we're coming up with our future plans as we learn the marina operations, um, then there's no reason why we can't prioritize that resident experience. Um, and again, we've, we've got a lot of resources, and technology that we're excited to implement that, that may really not interest anybody in this room, but, but there are a lot of ways this marina could be better operated. Um, a lot of ways that this marina could be better operated. Um, and and I, I, I personally think that the access, it starts with the access, but you know, it, it doesn't end there. It, it's kind of a, a full spectrum of services that, that you know, whether it be training um, on down to the concierge services, that we've talked about um, just offering a better way to enjoy your public asset is is really what our goal is you know if we're successful in doing that then i think that financially we can be as successful as we ever wanted to be we do just a couple more real quick from the right ends and then uh, take some questions from here daryl hodo will boat Will boat landing and parking, are they supposed to be launching and parking for the trailer, be free for Isle of Palm residents? If not, will the yearly boat launch pass that was purchased be transferred? Free. Not parking, launching is free. Yes. And if will the yearly boat launch pass that was purchased be transferred? Yes. I don't know that we need one, but yeah. yeah. I'm just reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more, uh, Jeff Simon, who's also here tonight. Please explain in detail how you plan to store boats at the marina. What type of equipment will you use to launch these boats? Do you have any, do you have planned any alterations to the bulkhead or ramp to accommodate launching of these boats? Where will people who store boats park? So again, currently, our plan is to operate as the marina is currently operating. Uh, we hope to get in there and get our feet wet, understand the pattern of things, understand if and how we can improve the parking lot. Once we understand all these very dynamic pieces of the puzzle, we're gonna look hard and see, are there other ways, are there better ways to add boats to the storage again without encumbering our neighbors with anything that would be you know, considered noisy or offensive in terms of equipment. There are several different types of equipment, whether it be a forklift or hoists or different different places around the world launch their boats in different ways. 
we've, we've looked at a lot of options. We're, we're continuing to research them. But at the end of the day, I, I don't believe that we're going to adopt any plans that will, um, that will affect our neighbors. And that's a commitment. So um, in terms of where people will park, again, none of this works if we're not able to make the parking and the, the navigation of the site more efficient. I think Ann Anderson of, of you know, all people in this room understands that there's a lot of challenges on this site. Um, so we're gonna be working hand in hand with our in-house engineers, with the city, and, and, and we've got to figure that out. But again, we, we do hope to improve the parking situation, uh, making that improvement with whatever we do. So I hope that answers your question. Just one final piece, Mike. Any any alterations to the bulkhead or ramp to accommodate launching of the boots? No. 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 All right, let's take a couple of inside questions. No changes to the bulkhead, no changes to the ramp. Be good. Question from the floor. Can you come up to the mic? Yeah. Jeff, let me get let me get her real quick. <coughs> And we're live streaming just so those folks can hear that. Hello, I'm Pamela Marsh. Um, I know the city just spent a lot of dollars replacing our floating docks under this arrangement. Whose responsibility in case of a hurricane, we're rolling into September, whose responsibility is the maintenance of the floating docks, any renovations that have to be made, also um, the um, maintenance and care of the seawall and the, and the bulkheads that are down there. Whose responsibility is that under this new arrangement? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So nothing changes in the current lease as far as that responsibility. Desiree, I don't know if you want to take this, but it, it's the city's responsibility to take care of the docks. Jeff. Jeff Lovins. Um, in the uh, rental pool, where the, will there be um, an opportunity to rent kayaks, paddle boards, <clears throat> rowboats, things that are not motorized? Will there be um, jet skis? <laughs> No jet skis? No jet skis. Will no, <laughs> I want to make sure this mic is working. No no jet skis, no parasail. Okay. Kayaks? Um, there is an operator currently that rents kayaks there. Okay. Um, I don't know that I would and Pat, I think they off, they they offer a host of of things that um, that I think okay. would, Last would question. remain. You know. And Separate. if they were to go away, I'm sure we would make sure we found somebody to operate okay. the similar business. Separate but related uh, sailboats, either in the club or uh, rental. Uh, we do not have sailboats in our club. I, I'm a sailor as well. Um, it, it's something we discussed, so, just haven't gotten there. Okay, thank but you. But love to talk more about it. So, yes, sir. Oh. Happy to hear that your uh, that sound noise for the marina is on your radar. I live very close to the marina, and obviously that's a concern for anyone who lives close. Um, do you have any, you know, just speaking of residents that live nearby, do you have any plans or anything you can offer to uh, keep the dust down? It seems to be just as bad a condition sometimes as the noise can be. Um, any future plans for that? This is something that we actually discuss. <laughs> in council chambers one thing that we are studying right now as part of any potential reallocation of the parking lot to, to make it more efficient there are a lot of products out there now that are pervious but it's basically pervious pavement um, if you've seen it it's an amazing product it's pretty expensive but it's something that we would really like to see down there i think just having in terms of the your first impression when you drive up to the marina, listen, I'm all about sort of the the, the marina feel, but um, sometimes it can look a little bit loose down there, and particularly on a on a hot dust bowl August day, um, it, it takes it takes parking and makes it look worse. We would love to implement something like that. Obviously, we'd have to work with Douglas's office on that, but. Um, I think it would make a big visual improvement to the marina. About another question or two from the audience, and we'll go back to some submitted questions. 
Mm-hmm. Anybody? Nope. All right, we'll go back to some of the submitted questions. Maybe it'll prompt another question or two. Randy Bell has a number, so we'll go through maybe half of these and then go back to some in, um, live questions. Does the death that Mr. Schuler is taking on with Brian Berrigan's buyout have any impact on the gross profit structure? Um, I have no idea what Mr. Schuler is doing from a debt standpoint on this purchase, but no, it doesn't have any impact on the gross profit structure. Will IOP provide to the public prior to second reading the Marina Finances pro rata projections for the next 10 years? Please include any planned budgeted ATAX contributions on our city website. Our fiscal 23 budget has uh, projections out through 27, I think it is, of income, expenses, and ATAX contributions. So roughly $150,000 from ATAX money to cover the debt for the uh, Marina and about 50,000 for other maintenance items. Is that right, Desiree? Um, how, oh, sorry, the current lease does not include any required dredging. Will both the city and Mr. Schuler acknowledge that dredging remains the responsibility of the marina operator? Again, current, um, current lease does not list dredging as a responsibility of either the city or the tenant. Past two times the marina has undergone dredging, the city has either partnered with neighboring groups and paid for the permitting or paid for the dredging itself. So again, that to Mike's comment about other lease provisions, this doesn't change what is currently sitting out there today. How will the operator determine who is allocated a slip dry storage and will current leases be terminated at year end question mark lottery? Sure. So I would say that in terms of whether existing slip agreements would be terminated, um, you know, we, we haven't quite gotten that far in terms of exactly what we would do. I don't know the, that I would feel right about terminating people's leases. So I'm going to say that's not kind of where my vision is today. Um, I think we would work really hard to make sure any leases moving forward um, would be, you know, prioritized according to everything that we've discussed. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah. Um, how will dry stored boats be placed in the water given the resident? historical strong opposition to dry stacks. Are you not using semantics to simply create a single level dry storage stack with all the same issues of noise associated with dry stack? I know you've hit on some of this, but just yeah. reiterate. I'll hit it again. I think it's important. Listen, this is a, this is a reasonable question. Um, again, I, I just want to make it clear. Our, our goal moving forward is to operate the marina as it's currently operated. If we find opportunity, creativity, and resources that do not impact our residents' quality of life, then I would like to think this whole community would be um, behind it. But for the record, no dry stack, no boats are getting launched you know, into the water with a forklift. If we do have any equipment um, that's assisting in the process, it would, you know, by nature, have to be, um, have to be small and it would have to be something that would not impact our neighbors um, so again we're working on some options but i would anticipate that boats are going to continue to be launched by trailer just as they have been um, since the beginning so do one more from randy um, all past and current tenants have signed personal lease guarantees is mr shooter willing to do the same why is this not a requirement of the city some of these next few questions, fortunately or unfortunately, are covered in executive session during contract and lease negotiations. But we've talked about, I guess, three different alternatives with Mike and his team about um, guarantees, upfront rent payments. And so that's still part of the ongoing negotiations that we're having. So there's been talk of a corporate guarantee, a personal guarantee, or some upfront uh, rent payments. So there's more, more to come on that as we continue negotiations. Yes. Uh, just, there, there was a please with that, Blair. You know, please go sure, to the mic. Sure. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add to that with, with the guarantees. The Brian Berrigan guarantee does not go away because the lease is assigned. And so from a legal perspective, the city is not harmed in any way by not getting another guarantee. 
So his guarantee survives and runs through the life of the lease. Thank you. We'll come back and do a couple more. Gene Garrett asks, our launch, our annual launch pass is still available for $100 per year to residents to put the boat in 24-7. The answer to that would be no. They will be <laughs> not available for sale. They will be available for free to Isle of Palms residents. And then, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Best answer of the day. <laughs> Uh, what docks, also from Gene Garrett, what docks are available for use when coming to or from the marina? Only one side is currently available. What docks are available for use when coming to and from the marina? I assume you're referring to the launch docks. So, um, you know, it used to be both sides, as everybody knows. I think once the new docks were complete, my understanding is I can't say this for sure. I believe they're using one side for um, for the ramp. I guess the right side as you're going to the water. Um, the other side has a locked gate at the hill. So anybody with no code is not going to be able to get down there. That's something we're going to have to figure out. I mean, I think it's a challenge. I think that they use that left side as you're going to the water currently for rental boats. Um, in terms of staging and or return, I think there's a it's sort of a, a moving target as to which rental boats are functioning and which are not at any given time. But, but there's sort of a, it's something that we got to learn. But uh, that's one of the many, many things that we have on our list to study and improve. Deborah Elliott, will residents be able to enjoy special rates for the boat rental and or membership in the boat club? Another good question, put me on the spot. Um, listen, it's really something we haven't considered, but um, I'm not saying we wouldn't consider it. Well, what I can tell you right now is that a big part of everything we're doing is to put the residents' interest first, and whether it be figuring out parking or, or a lot of these issues. So I think there's gonna be a lot of benefits regardless of, of exactly how some of, these, um, some of these offerings shake out. We can certainly do a resident uh, rental discount, the rental bus. So, and if anybody wants to buy some used rental bus. Uh, <laughs> that have boat rental on the side? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those. <laughs> Question from the audience? Take a break from this. Yes, ma'am. This is why you sat up front. I'm not sure if this is probably directed more at the city. There's been a lot of talk about the shared lot. And my understanding was that the shared lot was not part of the lease with the marina store. It was a separate lot that Mr. Berrigan was managing for the city. So I'm just curious, is this part of the lease or is it separate? The shared lot is not part of the marina store lease. It's under the control and management of the marina operations lease. So the other lease that is currently um, the, it, it's, it's under Brian's control now that would be assigned to Mike. Yeah, just to ex go from Desiree Height. So just, there's two leases on the property, one for the store and then one for everything else and then one for our new uh, restaurant folks, if that makes sense. What else from the floor? Paige, bring it on. That's a just in time question. You just walked in the door. That's I, impressive. I've, I've been listening online. <laughs> I just ran over. I hope y'all haven't already covered this and I missed it. I'm on the elusive list. I've been on the list for three and a half years. I was due to get a rental slip this year. I went to get my slip, promised because after it was all delivered and beautiful, and I was told they're not doing any. So I no longer, excuse me, I'm out of breath. I'm no longer on the list. Well, I'm at the top of the list from what I've been told. So last year when it went under construction, no, you can't have the slip, but you're at the top of the list. You're like one of the first, first ones. So now here I am. Where is that list? I know you're saying you don't know it. Where am I going to come under that list? Well, I guess that's put you on top of the list. Uh... Well, okay, so sorry. 
And I don't mean to speak just for me. Yeah, I know there are other people who have also wanted to be a part of of leasing or having a a renting a boat slip as a resident. Yeah. So it's a um. So you don't know the list. I don't. I don't have the list. Um. I I I like the list. Um. The list has been referred to me. I, I do believe it exists. Um. I think it's just something that maybe is kept close to the vest over there. But are you going, I guess my question moving forward then, thank you for uh, applying that, but moving forward, how are you going to take on those people who don't have a rental at this time who would like one? How many are going to be available? You know, the new dock was supposed to provide some more rental space. Um, Now I know you have a lot of other plans for all that. Where do uh, leases come in? Um, Well, again, I I think I wouldn't say that we have a lot of other plans for the balance of the space. I'd okay. say that we're we're definitely looking at it all very hard. You know, if, if you think about it, there's a lot of space that that is generally open, and and that space is used for transients. It's used for um, staging of dry storage boats. It's used for staging of you know excess staging of boats from the launch. There's this. There's a crazy amount of boats that get launched there and there's nowhere to put them and it sure. there's a lot of things that oh, need yeah. to change over there um, i wish i could give you a straight answer and i'm not trying to be evasive it's all right. but what i can say is that you know we do need to come up with a, a program we've not come up with a program as of yet that says what's the most fair way to do it i think somebody said something like a lottery um it's tough i mean it, it's we don't even know quite what the spectrum of of residents and what their boating needs are. I think what you will see from us, you know, assuming we kind of take the next step here, is we're going to have another listening session where I've got actually my whole team here. And they're going to be more of a collaborative environment, less of a Q&A, more of like a tell us about your boat or what are you interested in. And and once we get an idea of, you know, what do we have to work with, we got to we got to try to maximize it. I mean, there's one dock that still needs a fair amount of work. Um, how we are able to harness that dock um, in, in its new configuration, um, there's some pluses and minuses to the design we've seen. So, um, Well, thank you. I, I think the marina is one of our greatest resources. So well, thank you. We well, appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to make it better. First on the list. Hi, Mr. Schuler and Mayor Pounds, Brenda Rosenthal. Um, so the presentation was lovely, and I do understand as a new business owner here that you've got a lot that you don't know yet. So we hear a lot of it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be great for the residents and all that. I haven't seen anything specific that's going to be great for the residents, but I trust that it will. But I do know one thing that many residents are concerned about is the forklift noise. And you've said that you're going to move the boats and it's going to be magical technology and this, and you don't want to do that, and you don't want to annoy the residents. So on that one issue, would you be willing to put that in the lease in writing? Yes, ma'am. I, actually, we did put that okay. in the lease in the writing. Great. Um, and it may not be something that's that's been disseminated, but yeah. just to kind of, again, to speak directly to that. Right. We're not 100% sure which direction we go in. Right. If we do use yard equipment or a small forklift, the only thing that we would ever consider doing, and this wouldn't be something we would unilaterally consider, would be using electric products that, uh, you know, and again, this is a big difference between sort of an electric yard lift and a forklift for a dry stack. Forklift for a dry stack, I own several. Yes. These are major pieces of equipment, and yes. there's there's a reason because they're going to three, four stories up to to pick a boat up, and then they're going negative to put them down. It's big diesel equipment. My office is literally right next right. to one. So I, I I'm I'm together with you and the neighbors. Any path forward would be heavily considered, vetted, collaboratively approved. Um, just so you know. And we did put it in the lease just to make sure 
they can't have that backup noise and all that stuff. Um, but so. it could still be a forklift? It, it could be any piece of equipment, really. And if we need to get stronger language that says it can't be something that, you know. Well, I mean, there is also some concern, the noise factor, but if you're keeping, if you're increasing the dry storage, whether it be in the form of a stack or not, and you've got to bring those over to the to the ramp over by the restaurant, and there's a big piece of equipment going through that parking lot, and yet we want it friendly for ice cream for the children and all that. How's, you know, the, your other marinas, I've been to all of them, and they're not set up with kids riding their bikes much. Bohicket, Seabree, none of them are. So it's a little bit of a different concern making it user resident children friendly um, and then having a big piece of equipment even if it's quiet so what do you think about that perfect question and i'm glad you asked any piece of equipment we use would be simply to to move a boat not to actually drive it around the parking lot and put it in the water right but you got a long way to go no well no it, again we haven't 100 percent made a commitment down any one path. Right. But if a forklift or a small yard lift were used, if it were electric, if it had no noise, um, I mean, some of these units are very impressive. It would simply be used to pick up the boat and turn it around and put it on a trailer. This would be not. It, so it would put it on a trailer that would carry it across the parking lot to the boat launch? Just like it is today. Yes, ma'am. OK. All right. Thank you. Sure. And Brenda, real quick, just for your and everybody's benefit. Um, so in the latest draft of the amendment, which is headed back to Shooter's office today, tomorrow kind of time frame, um, it does specifically talk no dry stack storage, no machinery that creates beeping noise. I can't remember the exact lawyer language that we put in, but it's it's in there. So Linda, sorry. Yep. Hi, Mike. I'm Glenda Nemus, and we met because you own the Gadsden House, and I owned a business down yes, the street, you might remember. Um, you're not the majority owner, you're the managing partner, is that correct? Yes, but I'm a substantial sh shareholder. Okay, so it's a business investment, and the majority owner is not you, and I understand business investments, and that's fine. It's perfect. We all have to have a way to work and make money. Um, at what point do the community rights trump the business investment? And the reason I'm asking this is if the majority owner needs to make more money and not give away free launching and free parking and other things to the residents because they want to, he or she or whomever, the investors are want to get more money from it. How do you how do you balance the community needs and rights with the business investment dollars needed and wanted? Okay, I think that's a that's a fine question. Um, how do I balance it? Um, I, I think it's important for everybody to know. You know, we we have a substantial business, and I said I was not the majority shareholder, but I am um, myself and my partner or substantial ma majority shareholders collectively. So there is no majority shareholder, but, but between the two of us, we are. Um, I am the CEO, I am the manager, and I cannot be removed without removing myself. So I make the decisions, and I do think that's important for you guys to know. I make the call, I'm not beholden to partners or investors. This isn't a big private equity roll up. This is not a, um, you know, certainly not a public company like a safe harbor type thing. And, you know, we do make financial decisions. A lot of these things that you mentioned specifically do happen to be codified in what would be a go forward lease document. But um, in terms of the day-to-day -day decisions, um, I'd like to think that everybody agrees that a successful marina has an operator who's able to, to make decisions based on market conditions. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm going to be held to the standard that this community sort of sets for me. Um, 
you know, again, if it's my call what we what we do and the policies we set and whether we uh, invest in a new opportunity or whether we focus on everything um, that we currently have. These are all my decisions. So, um, you know, it's a tough business and I think it's important for everybody here to know. Um, you know, Brian, you know, love him or hate him, it, it hasn't been all roses for, for Brian. And, um, you know, I, I think we, we need the community support. We need the community input. We are not going to be perfect. Transitioning a marina operation is is difficult. I've done it five times now in, 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 in relatively quick succession. Um, but again, we, we've done a lot of good in doing that. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, the more community engagement we have, then our business decision is not going to be, am I going to make more money by charging somebody for a launch pass? Um, I'd like to think that our our long-term profitability is going to hinge directly on whether or not we're successful in our overall mission. If we're giving you guys what you want, what you need, what you deserve, then, you know, my I'm hoping that we're profitable. So still got a lot of work to do. I hope that answers your question. Well, there's always the push pull between community needs and business investment. I think they'll always be there and time will tell in the future which one wins out. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nancy Twyford. Um, I half owner of a boat, but I'm not really a boater. Um, but what I can say is the last couple of years coming up to the marina, um, the main thing I want on my boat is a pump out and gas. And I've had a couple of problems with that with the current ownership. And is your plan to provide a really good quality service so that when we come up to our, you know, Isla Palms Marina, that we're going to be able to get the services that we need? And then also I would say as far as um, people pulling, you know, if you had something that moved the boats, I would like more protection than we have had because I don't know how to back up a boat, but I've been over there doing it and it was the wrong decision. So I like the idea that, you know, that you want to make it more efficient for all of us. And then my last comment is um, I really appreciate your transparency tonight. I, I see a lot of folks um, commenting on social media, and I just ask everyone here to, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, and ask it tonight, because this social media stuff is getting ugly, and we just need to know right straight from the, the potential owner, and so if anybody has questions, here's your, here's your chance. But back to I want working pumps and a pump out. As long as I can get those things, I'm a happy customer. Easy. So, again, uh, great question. Um, you know, I I can't speak to um, you know operations um, maybe prior to the prior to the replacement of the docks. You know, I know that the docks during the replacement process there was a obviously a delay in, in being able to access the pump out and fuel facilities. Um, you know, I, they, they have a functional pump out now, which is good. I think it wasn't functional for a while there. Um, and, um, you know, they've got this nice brand new, honestly, it's a beautiful fuel facility. It's maybe the nicest in the whole city. Um, I, I don't know that they're doing so much wrong. It, it's what they're not doing potentially right and again that, that feels uh, I, don't, I don't mean in an, in an antagonistic way towards brian and his team and his operation i think there, there's there's an approach that we can take top down in terms of you know what is the right staffing configuration for this marina uh, no we shouldn't have boats circling uh each other for an hour just waiting on fuel um you know because you got these great setup if a pump goes down, you need to be able to have the staff that can at least address the, the bare minimum maintenance aspects of these things. We have full-time uh, maintenance techs. We have full-time property management professionals. 
Um, th these are, again, ways that we create efficiency is uh, a single small business operator is just not going to be set up to have uh, a full-time this and a full-time that. Um, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have that. These are the kind of resources that I think we could bring to bear. Uh, again, so much of this also goes back to efficiency, technology, streamlined planning. And again, I, I don't want to get too far into the operational weeds, but the more that we are able to plan for launches and possibly even control that launch sequence, and I'm not saying we're going to launch a private boat. If, if you have your boat in your yard and you want to launch it, that's that's great. But for any of our dry stack customers or or again, whether it be boat club, boat rentals, even even um, commercial operators, being able to take all that all that scheduling information and in, um, like like a logistics professional and say, okay, what time do we need to start fueling? And instead of just kind of waiting for it to happen, we're going to get all these boats fueled first thing in the morning. We're going to let the charter guys get out. Once that lull comes after the charter guys leaves, we're going to we're going to fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. So that when the push does come around midday, when the other folks from other places start pushing up the intercoastal waterway and need fuel and want to get snacks and stuff from the ship store, that it doesn't become a disaster, which we've all seen happen. And listen again. I think they do a great job. Uh, that doesn't mean it can't be done better. Uh, it's, again, it's a tough business. Everybody in the whole community is experiencing, experiencing staffing issues. Um, doesn't matter what industry you're in. Um, but again, I, I feel like we've, we've done a great job so far at our other operations, and we're going to try to do our best here. To your comment, my wife and I get breakfast a lot of times at Saltworks and stand at the ramp for entertainment value for sure. It, <laughs> it's better better than reality TV, without a doubt. We've got about five minutes. I'm going to hit a few more from Randy. I think we've answered most of the other things because these other couple from Randy are uh, really. Just pertaining to the boat clubs you already have in your different marinas what do you say three or four but are they um specific to just that that um marina or do they can they go into the other marinas and the other boat clubs and rent boats or use those? sure great question um so yes, each each club is unique. It's the same technology platform. It's the same general scope of services. They all, you know, each one has some some individual um, differences per marina, kind of based on where the marina is and 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 what you might do if you're on the boat at at Bohicket and you're going to Botany Bay versus if you're in the middle of the harbor and you're going to go on a harbor cruise. Um, so each one of them have a, has a little bit of unique aspect to it. Um, they do have the ability to sort of do a cross cross club reservation, um, which again I think is is a, a feature that everybody really loves. I'd say ninety five percent of reservations are made at the home at the home club. But again, if if you are a member of the bowl club and you want to have a an evening downtown and you want to take a boat out if you have a boat available on the calendar on your app you reserve the boat great you go pick up your boat you go out have your harbor cruise end up for dinner downtown and hopefully make it back to your house in Isle Palms but so so there there is a benefit um, to to kind of cross pollinate between clubs it's not something that's abundantly utilized but it's there and it's nice to have when you need it so, yeah. <laughs> um, renee mueller you've um mentioned a free launch pass but that's sort of worthless if we can't park our trailer you haven't mentioned parking at all and any guaranteed parking for trailers great point um i wish we had a lot more um to repeat the question i believe um you made a good point. 
what good is free launching if there's nowhere for a resident to park their boat? Trailer. Excuse me, park their trailer. Um, I think that's a great point. I think that goes back to one of the observations that I mentioned, which is the parking lot is dominated by off-island traffic, particularly the truck and trailer parking. It's dominated by off-island traffic. I, I wouldn't tell you that I have the solution, because I don't, but i give you an example of a solution. Again, we're speaking to um, you know, resident priority. So if we were able to populate, say, on a website or on an app or something like that, um, available truck and trailer parking, so that Isla Palms residents were able to pre-reserve their parking space, not for a fee, but pre-reserve. So you know you've got company in town this weekend, you want to pre-reserve your space. I think that would be great, because I think what happens right now is you go get your boat ready, you're excited, you think you're early, you get down to the marina and there's nowhere to park. Boat day ruin, um, probably by somebody like me from Mount Pleasant. Um, listen, I'm not trying to throw Mount Pleasant and other people out the door, but I think there is a way for Isle of Palms residents to, to be made a priority and still not lose out on, on, let's just say, unused spaces. So if, if, if somebody from another place knew that they needed to get online and look at the availability, but they didn't have the ability to make that reservation, uh, you know, until you got to a 24 hour notice period, I, I just made that up, but maybe that's the way to do it. I, I'm not really sure. I think there's a better way to do it. It's something that would be important to me because, again, right now, it, I think there is opportunity and efficiency. And if that means less overall traffic, um, I can live with that. I'd rather make the bet that. Can we get some kind of guarantee about uh, trailer parking? Um, I think I'm giving away a good bit of our trailer parking to the city. So that would be an easy guarantee I would imagine for, for the administration. But again, I, I could guarantee you that we're gonna work to try to make it in some scenario, like I just mentioned, like how do we make it work for everybody? The last thing I wanna do is reserve every space, let's just say for the residents, but once the season's over, I got an empty parking lot and nobody to walk in the ship store and to, to help pay the salaries of everybody that's working in there. So. So there needs to be a little bit of a balance. I couldn't say what that is yet, but I, I think, again, it goes back to where are our priorities and hopefully we can help make that work for you. I just want to add, uh, city, city Council will soon be discussing what the parking rules will look like for the shared lot. And our recommendation from the staff to council will be for the existing 12 trailer parking spaces that are in the shared lot for council to consider making those IOP resident only, so that we can at least guarantee, in addition to the spaces that are on 41st Avenue, um, that are resident only trailer parking, that we can add to that fleet. Um, that would be an opportunity for the city if this deals go through. Just a couple more real quick, kind of in the parking theme, John Bushnell uh, asked a question around, John, this is a loose interpretation of your question, efficiency of parking and how do we ensure more? A uh, couple of things, you know, the city, uh, the 16 spots that are by the new dock, you know, those are resident only currently. This whole lot that we're talking about now will be resident only if, if we assign this lease. We've put in, I think, 14 golf cart parkings right at the entrance to the marina on 41st. One of our drainage projects, 41st, that will take place next fall, we're looking to pipe that particular ditch from waterway to a about the entrance to where the marina is now. So that will allow us to pick up a significant amount of parking spots on, on that piped area from, again, from Waterway Boulevard out, out to about where the um, marina entrance is now. So that'll be a significant amount of parking we can pick up, trailer, golf cart, bike, whatever. You know, one of the, one of the things we were talking about with Mike this morning, uh, 
never really had dawned on me, but it's like, why do we have a playground in the middle of the parking lot? That's a great question. Could we move it to the, you know, where, where Brian just put down the new AstroTurf? John, I guess we don't call it AstroTurf, do we? Synthetic grass. Um, synthetic grass, you know, and that's one of those, I mean, think about how many more golf carts you could pack in that area where the uh, playground is now. So again, just ideas. He's got to get his feet wet and in there to, you know, figure out what's what. One or two more questions from inside and then we'll wrap up. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, are there any plans to make any improvements to the marina store to match the rest of the, the fuel dock? Looks so beautiful. Islander looks so beautiful. And then you've got the marina store. <clears throat> Just wondering. <laughs> Painting. Well, you, you, so might it all have, flows. you might have won the best question of the day. <laughs> it bothers me a lot yeah. when I drive up there just because it's kind of yellow and everything else is really nice white. Yeah. Yes, I would love to see it painted. Um, okay. I believe it's got a new roof on it, which is which it is does. nice. And, yeah. and you know, again, don't don't want to see it changed, but improved. Improved to match. Yes. Everything else has that been would, done that looks awesome down I, there. Okay. A little, a little bit would go a long way with this. this Just a little place, paint. Awesome. Thank so, you. Yes, ma'am. Paige, did you buy two tickets? <laughs> I know. You're out of breath. You know, you I'll got, be really But now fast. you got your breath. That's what know, scares me. At least me. I'm better. Um, so I love hearing you say the word responsible all evening. It's been great and responsible um, in, in lovely improvement ways. So when um, talking about the boat club, I'm not familiar with those. Is that something that a boat club takes on as well? Is the education of those new boaters or do they offer education for what's appropriate on our waterways? I have been, I'm on the water a lot and I've been at the boat docks and kind of hear some of that education that happens. Um, I, so I'm wondering if there's something do you have the plans for written? What, what does that look like with the boat club? Great question. So we, we have several sort of tiers of education. We do require all of our members to take a, a test, which again is anybody in this room could pass the test. It's not meant to be difficult, but we do have, uh, again, certain tiers of um, checkout with our staff where you go on the boat and you you go out and you come back and dock it. And based on your level of proficiency, there's some people who, you know, it takes about 20 seconds and then then it's then it's done because clearly this is a lifetime boater who knows how to handle themselves. Um, there's some people that need a lot more work and, and we, we'd be the first to let them know. Um, we've also got relationships with some U.S. Coast Guard certified training groups. You know, there's a sort of a a funny thing in the insurance where you're we're really not supposed to train people um but but we we take it very seriously and we we we've got a great relationship with some of these groups people generally know when they need help and so far i feel like they haven't been afraid to ask um, and when they don't know our guys are trained to identify that and uh to give them polite very polite hints along the way Quick one. It's our last one, and then I'll do some wrap up. Something like that, yeah. Um, hey, uh, Kurt Helfrich. Uh, I happen to be a commissioner for Iowa Palms Water and Sewer Commission, and there's a pump station sort of in the middle of the parking lot there that's turning out to be something that looks worse than the rest of it. So, just a thought. Well, we're happy to work with you. <laughs> to make it as good as it can be as well. But thank you. Um, uh, again, just to repeat the question, I think it was more of a point of information that there's a pump station in the middle of the um, site that, that could use some some imp improvement. Full, a full, it wouldn't be the only one that we've got underneath of one of our parking lots. Um, again, we, we've got in-house civil engineering, which again, for a department like yours, I think y'all get along great. Um, that's not my vernacular, but y'all, y'all will have a lot of fun talking about pump stations and these, these things.
they're 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 talented professionals. Thank you. Just a couple of quick comments that we didn't get to all the questions, but most were starting to get repeat. Um, question was asked about Mike's business partner. This is a public document presentation that was done early May, I think it was. So Mike and his business partner own 80% of this group that's coming in to uh, take over our marina. Um, there are, our legal staff had about nine different due diligence items that we had requested from Mike and his business partner. Uh, we have received a stack of information, not all nine incomplete, but again, when you're looking at it, to me, from our standpoint, it's can these guys operate a marina and can they make their lease payments? And yes to both of those to me. And again, Mike's, we've talked about guarantee. We've talked about a year's worth of rent payments up front. I think there are multiple ways we can make sure the city's protected uh, from a financial standpoint. So we are just a few minutes over. Thank you for coming tonight. Mike will be here for just a little bit longer, unless you're running like the wind. If you have questions that we just didn't get, city council will be here for a little while.